My name is Dr. Donovan, and if you've been told you need a carotid endarterectomy, you probably have a lot of questions. In this video, we're going to cover what the procedure is and why it's done, when surgery is recommended, how to prepare, what happens on the day, what recovery looks like, the risks involved, and possible alternatives. As ever, this video is split into chapters and timestamped to help you navigate your way around. So let's start with the basics. What is a carotid endarterectomy? Well, a carotid endarterectomy is an operation to remove fatty deposits, also called plaques, that build up in the carotid arteries. These arteries, one on each side of your neck, supply blood to your brain, face, and neck. When plaque narrows or blocks these arteries, it's called carotid artery disease or carotid artery stenosis. Now, if left untreated, this can reduce blood flow to the brain or cause a clot to form and travel upwards. This results in a stroke or a transient ischemic attack, a TIA, sometimes called a mini stroke. So it is a really serious condition. Now, around one in four strokes in the UK are caused by a narrowing of the carotid arteries. So this procedure isn't just routine, it can in fact be life-saving. So when is carotid endarterectomy needed? Well, surgery is usually recommended if your carotid artery is narrowed by more than 50% and you've recently had a stroke or TIA or tests show that you've got severe narrowing even without symptoms. The procedure is ideally done within two weeks of your symptoms starting to offer the best chance of preventing another stroke. It's not recommended if your artery is only mildly narrowed, that's 0 to 49% or completely blocked. In those cases, the risks of surgery may outweigh the benefits. So what causes carotid artery disease? Well, this is a wide ranging topic, but the condition develops when fatty substances build up on the inner walls of arteries, a process known as atherosclerosis. Now risk factors for this include aging, high fat diets, high blood pressure, diabetes, and smoking. When plaque builds up, the artery narrows. This can lead to an ischemic stroke if the artery gets completely blocked, or what we call an embolic stroke, where a piece of the plaque breaks off and blocks a smaller artery in the brain. So how is carotid artery disease diagnosed? Well, most people are diagnosed after having symptoms of a stroke or a TIA. So things like drooping on one side of the face, weakness or numbness in a limb, slurred speech, or sudden loss of vision in one eye. But some people are actually diagnosed by pure chance during tests for unrelated conditions. That is called asymptomatic carotid stenosis. The person doesn't have any symptoms. Now to confirm the diagnosis and assess severity, you might have a duplex ultrasound, which shows how well blood is flowing, a CT scan to get detailed images using x-rays and contrast eye, or an MRA, a type of MRI to look at blood vessels and blood flow. Your arteries will be graded using something called a NASCET scale, N-A-S-C-E-T. Now this scale has three main grades. Minor is 0 to 49% narrowed, moderate is 50 to 69% narrowed, and severe is 70 to 99%. Surgery is usually considered for people with moderate or severe narrowing. So what happens before surgery? Well, before the operation, you'll be invited to a pre-assessment clinic. This may happen a few days before the procedure or on the same day. Now at this appointment, your team will ask about your current medical history and any medications that you might be taking and any allergies. They'll typically perform blood tests and a physical exam. So they might listen to your heart and check the pulses around your body, check for allergies and ask if you've had an anesthesia before. They'll also assess your teeth or dentures in case a breathing tube is needed. Now this is a great opportunity to ask any questions or raise concerns that you might have. Now your surgeon may also ask you to stop smoking to reduce infection risk and help healing. And stopping smoking is always a great idea. Lose weight if advised through gentle diet changes and focus on having a positive mindset which can help with recovery. Now let's walk through the procedure itself. Well, a carotid endarterectomy is usually done under either general anaesthetic where you'll be asleep or a local anaesthetic where you're awake but the neck is numbed. Now there is no strong evidence that one is better than the other. It depends on your health, your surgeon's preference, and also what you feel comfortable with. Now, local anaesthetic has the added benefit of allowing brain monitoring during the procedure. 
So now let's discuss what actually happens during the surgery. So this is obviously going to vary from person to person, but in general, you'll lie on an operating table and your neck will be cleaned with a special antiseptic. A seven to 10 centimeter cut is made along the side of your neck and the carotid artery is exposed and clamped to stop blood flow. A shunt, which is a small plastic tube, may be used to divert blood flow during surgery. The surgeon opens the narrow part of the artery, removes the plaque, and then closes the artery either with stitches or a patch. Now a small drain may be placed in the wound to help drain blood and is usually removed the next day and the whole procedure typically takes around one to two hours. Now if both arteries are narrowed you'll have them operated on one at a time with a gap of a few weeks in between. So what is recovery like? Well after surgery you'll be monitored in the recovery area or potentially a high dependency unit. Your breathing, heart rate and blood pressure will be closely watched. Now you might feel some discomfort or numbness at the wound site but this usually settles with painkillers. Most people can eat and drink within a few hours and are ready to go home in about one to two days. Now you'll go home with advice on caring for the wound which may have dissolvable stitches or ones that actually need to be removed. The scar, which typically runs from your jaw to your collarbone, will typically fade over two to three months, and you can use special creams on this to help with this healing process. Now driving, which is usually safe again after two to three weeks, but longer if you've had a stroke or TIA, and you'll need to follow the specific rules in your own country, so please do speak to your care team about this. In terms of work and exercise, most people return to work after three to four weeks, but they should avoid heavy lifting or strenuous activity during recovery. Again, this is going to depend on person to person and the job that you undertake. Now, like any surgeries, there are some risks. The most important ones are stroke, which is around a 2% risk, or death, less than 1%. Other possible complications include bleeding or infection at the wound site, nerve damage leading to hoarseness or numbness. Now, this affects about 4% of people, so four in every 100 people, and is usually temporary. A restenosis, which involves re-narrowing of the artery, might need further surgery in about 2-4% to of cases. Your surgical team will talk you through precautions to reduce the risks and will discuss everything with you beforehand so that you can make an informed decision. Now, what about alternatives? Well, there is a less invasive option called carotid artery stenting. Instead of making a cut in the neck, a catheter, which is a thin tube, is passed from the groin up to the carotid artery and a stent, a mesh tube, is inserted in to hold the artery open. Now stenting is done under local anesthetic and usually involves an overnight stay, but it does carry a slightly higher risk of stroke in the short term, especially if it's done within days of your symptoms. And that is why current guidance in the UK recommends surgery as the first line option, unless you have other health risks that make surgery unsafe. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, or if you or someone you know has had this procedure, feel free to share your experiences in the comments section below to help them. Thanks for watching and take care.